Bishop was quite surprised at how light the Pegasus was in his backpack. Despite being just under two foot tall, and being very strong for her size, she didn't weigh no more than your average household cat. Rainbow Dash was curled up inside the bag, looking through the holes of the fabric, watching as the balloon made its way through the forest. Bishop was walking with the captain as Andy, Cole, and Dixon followed in the rain. Rainbow Dash could hear the harsh weather crash against their shelter, her shelter, with the odd rain seeping through and tickling her nose. Every gust of wind cooled the sweat on her coat, making her whole body shiver. You okay in there? Bishop asked quietly, looking around for enemy soldiers. I'm okay. It's mm, a, a little cramped in here. Try and get some rest. Don't worry. We'll be there soon. Rainbow Dash squirmed to try to get a more comfortable position. She laid on her back and spread her wings so they covered the small holes in the bag. She started to think to herself as she bounced with every step Bishop took. How did I get here? She closed her eyes and tried desperately to remember the, her past. One memory in particular kept creeping back into her mind. Pinkie Pie, floating in front of her, saying goodbye. Was it just a dream, or did it actually happen? If so, then what was in that m Shh. Bishop stopped moving. Rainbow Dash listened to see what was going on, but she couldn't hear anything. She could feel the sergeant laying down on the wet ground. She stayed as quiet as she could, not knowing what was going on. The sergeant then cocked his gun. Ten seconds passed by as Rainbow held her breath. She could hear Bishop's heartbeat as she waited. You got him, the captain said quietly. Got him. Boom! A deafening explosion made Rainbow Dash jump. In the bag, instantly her body was struck with a surge of adrenaline as her surroundings were quiet again. But then the same dull ringing in her ears began to return as she felt a painful throbbing in her head. She began to quiver, holding her head in her hooves, not knowing what was happening. Number two was on the move. Got him. Got him. Rainbow Dash firmly covered her ears, shutting her eyes and waiting for the inevitable. Boom! Covering her ears hardly made a difference. The ringing got louder as the pain in her head got worse. She then felt the sergeant stand back up. She began to calm down as she heard Bishop sigh in relief. Good shooting. The captain praised, patting Bishop on the shoulder. He looked out to the distance, seeing a small town no more than a mile away. Alright, let's get... Whoop. The noise made Bishop flinch as the captain slumped backwards. His mouth hung open, and he looked at himself. There was... an open, bloody wound still smoking in his chest. Bishop stared in horror as he looked through the gory cavity, and time seemed to slow down as the captain looked at himself, looked at him in the eye before... A second impact struck the wound, wounded man between the eyes, and the captain gurgled as blood spurted through the gaping hole in his skull, covering Bishop in dark crimson. The startled sergeant watched as the commanding officer fell to the ground. He looked around, disoriented, in shock, looking for the attacker before another gunshot struck a tree inches from Bishop's head. His senses cleared. He could feel his heart pounding in his chest. Sniper! Bishop screamed. The sergeant drove, dove to the ground before the team did the same. Bishop looked through the sights of his weapon, scanning the trees, the ground, breathing heavily as he tried to find the shooter in the depths of the forest. Dixon, get your ass up here! Dixon crawled up to Bishop before grabbing the sniper rifle. He scoped, scooted into position before cocking the weapon. Bishop felt Rainbow Dash squirming in his backpack as he watched Dixon looking down the sights of his weapon, waiting for the right moment. He saw movement up in the trees, just a bright flash was seen down the sights. He ducked. The bullet, with inches to spare, 
before looking down his gun. He held his breath, grasped the gun tightly, and then, boom! Dixon fired a shot, shortly followed by another one. Screams echoed through the forest as Dixon watched his target fall out of the tree and onto the solid ground. Dixon stood up and gave Bishop his weapon before leading the way. Clear. Bishop took off his bag and unzipped it. He saw Rainbow Dash curled into a cyan ball, looking at him with terror in her eyes. Are you okay? Rainbow Dash couldn't reply. She tried to talk, but she was too scared to even utter a sentence. Bishop sighed. He knew there was no stopping now. He had to carry on. It's okay. I promise it's going to be okay. Blood? She whimpered. Bishop wiped most of the blood off his face. Looking at his hand, he could see the captain's blood all over his palm. He looked at the commanding officer lying on the ground in a pool of his own blood. He winced before turning back to the terrified Pegasus. A small, yet obviously fake smile spread across his face. We're almost there. Just sit tight. He watched, a rainbow watched, as he zipped the bag up again. And Bishop grabbed his gun before putting his big bag on his shoulders. Quickly, he regrouped with a platoon. They all looked back at their fallen captain. And Bishop then quickly turned around and then carried on walking into the forest. We'll mourn him later. Right now, we need to keep moving. Dixon, you get in front. Keep an eye out. These guys are sneaky bastards. No thanks, Dixon said with a slight chuckle. <laughs> You're not my boss. I'm staying back here. Dixon, this is no time for bitching. Get your ass up front, now. Fuck you. I'm staying back here. Dixon looked at Bishop looked at Andy and Cole before turning to Dixon again. He scowled before turning to face the treacherous path that they were going to take. Bishop said nothing and started walking in front of his team. They closely followed, gasping, grasping their guns as they prepared themselves for another fight. It wasn't long before they were walking past the shooter's body, sprawled on the blood-soaked floor. The soldiers became nervous as they looked around their surroundings. The thunder crashed and the rainfall, making it almost impossible to hear. The thick fog wicked around them, making it hard to see where they were going. Andy walked up to Bishop, before tapping him on the shoulder. I don't like this, Bish. We're really exposed out here. Just keep watch. It should be fine. The sergeant gave Andy a reassuring smile, before continuing. Bishop then looked back to see Dixon, still hanging back, but doing his job, at least. Everything all right back there, Dick? Bishop shouted. <laughs> yeah, everything's clear. And don't call me Dick. Bishop turned around again, walking backwards as he faced walking backwards as he faced the sergeant with a smirk on his face, as he could see Dixon was clearly afraid for once. Why? It's your nickname, isn't it? Dixon gave Bishop a menacing look before slowly walking closer towards the sergeant. My friends call me Dick. You're not a friend. You're not a pal. You're not even a partner. You're just some guy who I have the displeasure of working f Fuck! Dixon fell to the ground, accidentally dropping his gun as the excruciating pain consumed his mind. He continued to wail in agony as he grabbed his pistol and started shooting wildly into the woods. Bishop ran to Dixon as the other shoulder soldiers opened fire. Dixon! Dixon! Gah, fuck! Fuck! You're hit! Where are you hit? Motherfucker shot me in the ass! Bishop couldn't help but smirk as he helped the wounded sergeant to his feet. Bishop quickly ran past Andy and Cole, keeping his head low as they soon followed. Using the nearby trees as cover, they sprinted as fast as they could. Come on! Move, Dixon! Move! Shut the fuck up! Foop. Muffled blood curdled screams filled Bishop's ears as he felt the cyan Pegasus flailing wildly in his backpack. 
His heart skipped a beat as Rainbow's cries of pain echoed through the forest. Andy! Cole! Take Dixon! Now! As soon as Dixon left his grasp, Bishop jumped behind a large tree before taking his backpack off as quickly as he could. Rainbow Dash was still screaming in agony as he unzipped the bag, seeing the Pegasus squirming in pain. Rainbow, where are you hit? My wing. Ah, my wing. Bishop could see the wound was bleeding heavily, and the Pegasus looked at him, tears flowing from her eyes before mixing into the small puddle of blood under her. Bishop looked up to see Andy and Cole and Dixon waiting for him as they fired at the enemy. Die, you motherfuckers! Die! Before uh, Bishop looked back at Rainbow Dash, his eyes were fixed as she screamed hysterically. He quickly reached into his bag and pulled Rainbow from it, creating new, ear-shattering wails of pure agony. Bishop cradled Rainbow in his arms before taking a deep breath. He started to sprint as fast as he could towards his team, with the Pegasus bawling in his arms. Follow me! Follow me! Bishop stormed past the soldiers and continued on. Andy, Cole, carried Dixon as fast as they could as they followed the sergeant. Dixon grunted and yelled as he limped with his one good leg, still firing at the enemy, rage burning in his eyes. Sergeant Bishop could feel the adrenaline pumping through his legs as he sprinted deeper into the forest. Before he lost sight of his team, he slowed down to wait for them. He looked in his arms as Rainbow Dash grabbed his collar with her teeth. She looked up at him, grinding her teeth into the soft denim, looking at him with eyes pleading for mercy from the indescribable pain. Please, p p please, make it stop. Just hold on, okay? Just hold on! Just then, Bishop saw his team running towards him. He looked around for cover, but there was nothing but trees, no rocks to jump behind, or any trenches to jump into. Then, he caught a glimpse of the trail of blood left behind. His heart jumped into his mouth. Rainbow Dash needed medical attention. Now. He helped Dixon, Cole, and Andy, still holding the helpless creature in his hands before walking to them. And behind, behind a large rock close by, bullets still flying through the air as they took cover. How many are th <laughs> His sentence was interrupted by an explosion of shrapnel, shrapnel coming from the tree. Cole and Bishop looked back to see a large hole the size of a grapefruit going straight through it. Bishop then caught a glimpse of the platoon slowly getting closer. Five? Bishop answered his own question. Looks like we took our guards to a small base camp. Fuck. Boom! The solid tree was shot through again, confirming that the oncoming fleet knew where they were hiding. What do we do, Bish? Bishop looked around him. Dixon was yelling in pain as Cole tried to assist. Andy was low on ammo, and Bishop was holding a wounded Pegasus, slowly gl growing paler in his arms. Just then, he thought of a plan. Dixon! What? Can you shoot? Yeah. Why? Get over here! Sergeant Cole helped Dixon to his feet before standing, sitting him on the tree, making Dixon scream in p pain again. Fuck! Bishop then grabbed Andy's collar. Alright, you two. Use the tree, shoot through the bullet holes. Got it? Got it. Cole, I need medical assistance over here. Hang on. Bishop slowly paced, placed Rainbow Dash on the ground as he pulled back. Sergeant Cole kneeled beside them. Cole quickly looked down at the Pegasus before looking back at Bishop. We're losing her fast. Can you help her? I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know her anatomy. You've got to do something. Uh... All right, uh, let me see the wound. Bishop looked at Rainbow Dash before gently holding her forehooves. Dash looked into his eyes as Cole emptied his bag onto the floor. Dixon and Andy were still shooting as they took out soldiers one by one. Eat this! With one precise shot, Dixon fired at one of the grenades tied to a soldier's belt, making it explode on impact. Both Andy and Dixon ducked as shrapnel and flames blasted past them, filling the air with a thick dust. Dixon then looked back through the bullet hole, searching for survivors. A loud war cry was heard before he sh saw a soldier running towards them, holding a grenade in each hand. Dixon fired at his chest, stopping him in his tracks. The soldier gasped 
before falling to his knees, gasping for air. Dixon then noticed the grenades had no pins in them. He grabbed Andy before throwing him to the ground. FIRE IN THE HOLE! Everyone ducked as Dixon leaped into the air. In mid-jump, the grenades blew, sending flames and shrapnel in all directions. Dixon landed face first onto the ground as Bishop held Rainbow Dash in his hands. Rainbow, you need to let Cole see the wound. Rainbow Dash shook her head, terror in her eyes as she struggled to breathe calmly. Bishop tried to slowly pull her hooves away from her wound, but Rainbow quickly realized before snatching her hands back and covering the still bleeding wound. Please, we can't help you if you don't let us see it. This is the last thing I wanted to happen to you. Please, let him see it. I promise you, you'll be fine. She looked at him before looking at her wing. She began to grow weaker. Her heart was beating out of his chest and she began to see double as the loss of blood began to take its toll. Unable to fight anymore, she let his arms let her arms go limp, instantly regretting her decision as Bishop pulled them away. Bishop then called for Andy, whispered in his ear. Rainbow could not tell what he was saying, but before she could ask, she felt Cole's hands touch her wing. She flinched, trying her best to keep still, but the sergeant examined her wounds. <clears throat> the bullet's still inside. I've got to take it out or she'll bleed to death. Bishop's heart sank. He knew what was coming next. Where's the medkit? He asked. We lost it back in Pozna. Remember? We ain't got no anesthetic. No morphine. No bandages. We ain't got shit. Bishop looked at Rainbow Dash. The image was just too heartbreaking. She was a ghostly pale. Her eyes just staring at him. Bloodshot with tears flowing from them. Her body was a mass of cuts and bruises. And her mane was covered in her own blood. Bishop sighed as he thought of a plan. But he didn't like it. Andy? Yes? <clears throat> Pull some thread out of your trousers. Cole, do you have anything like uh, a fishing hook? A needle? I still have the old stitching needle from when I patched you up. Alright, get it out. We'll use whiskey as an anesthetic. It's too risky, Bishop. Do you have a better idea? The sergeant snapped. Cole paused before looking back at the wound. He knew it was only the only option that he had. Sergeant Cole nodded before going through his bag. Bishop then looked at Rainbow Dash as she looked back, weakly groaning in pain. Listen to me, Rainbow. We're going to help you, but this is going to hurt. Okay? I promise. I promise you'll be alright once this is over. Do you trust me? Bishop looked at his team, and Andy gave Cole the thread as he pulled the whiskey and needle from his bag. Rainbow Dash whimpered as she watched Cole threatening the needle. No matter what she did, there was no way she could stop it now. Bishop then ripped the leather strap from his backpack before holding it in front of Rainbow Dash. She winced before she opened her mouth and bit down hard on the strap. Bishop then looked at Cole before turning to Andy, giving him a nod, to which the private responded by firmly grisping, grappling Rainbow Dash's legs. She squirmed as she was held down tight. Bishop looked up to Cole, who was washing his hands as with the whiskey <clears throat> as he finished and kneeled in front of Bishop. Ready? Ready. Cole replied with a nod. Okay. The tension grew tighter with every passing second. Bishop then held Dashie's blood stained wing to the ground. One. Cole held his hands above the wound, taking a deep breath as he psyched himself up. Two. And he pressed his full body weight against Rainbow's legs, making it impossible for her to move as the final second approached. Three! With one firm jab, Cole buried his fingers into the gory wound. Rainbow's whole body tensed up as her pupils were no longer, nor larger than pinpricks. Her whole body began to tremble as Cole dug deeper into her flesh, blood spurting out from the wound as Cole searched for the bullet. Rainbow looked at, uh, Bishop looked at Rainbow as she held, uh, buried her teeth into the leather. Stifling screams echoed off in the trees as Rainbow's chest heaved to the ground. Sergeant Cole cringed as he pulled his fingers past exposed nerves, muscle, and tendon. With one last piercing cry, Rainbow Dash slumped onto the ground, numb, lifeless, and she lost consciousness. Rainbow Dash was now only a few hundred yards away from her destination. 
She was still looking to the, at the light that caught her attention. She noticed it was coming from a large cave, and it had a blue tint to it. She spread her wings and slowly descended, breathing deeply as she lightly adjusted her altitude. She loosened off her legs before landing on the solid ground. She retracted her wings before examining her surroundings, and she felt optimistic. Rainbow Dash always wanted to do some exploring by herself, mainly because of her being a huge fan of Daring Do, <clears throat> who was always the Lone Ranger in the stories she read. Rainbow Dash quickly looked around her to make sure no pony was around before, experiment, uh, before excitement started to well up in her chest. Seeing the coast was clear, Rainbow Dash posed before saying, This looks like a job for Daring Dash. She giggled to herself before she slowly walked towards the mouth of the cave. As her eyes adjusted to the darkness inside, she froze, looking in awe. Inside the cave was a large stone sculptures of ponies she had never seen before, covered in jewels and standing proud. This only fueled Rainbow's fangirl excitement even more. It was exactly like something out of one of Daring Do's adventures. But then, Rainbow Dash paused before thinking to herself, Is it really a good idea to go by myself? What if there are monsters inside? She then shook her head, ignoring her nerves as she pressed on, looking at every sculpture she passed. I can't wait to tell this to the girls. Rainbow Dash's confidence then grew as she began to jump from rock to rock inside the cave, uh, commentating herself as she leaped across the room. Daring Dash, knowing danger could be moments away, she leaps fearlessly across the dark corners of the dungeon. She would never stop. She would never tire until she finds, uh, hmm. Oh, oh! The Crystal Goblet! Yeah! Rainbow Dash was lost in her imagination as she threw herself into the air, spreading her wings, closing her eyes. She felt for thud. Yeah, that was dumb. Rainbow Dash crashed to the ground, shaking, uh, shaking the dark cave around her. Ow, ugh, my head. She blinked as her vision slowly cleared, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> a gust of wind stroked her coat, sending a shiver down her spine. She was no longer daring dash. She looked around before she started to get nervous. Just then, she saw a blue flash of light to her right. She darted for her head. She darted her head towards the source, just as it disappeared. She slowly got back onto her hooves before walking towards where she saw the an anonymous glow. She then saw it again. Now, she could confirm it wasn't her mind playing tricks on her. All of a sudden, an odd buzzing sound caught her attention. Her eyes, ears perked up as she saw a dark figure in the tunnel in front of her. Rainbow Dash jumped back. Her eyes widened. She could have sworn it was a pony by the way it was running. Was it in trouble? Why was it running? After a few moments of silence, Rainbow Dash found the confidence to run down the tunnel. If some pony was in danger, she was the only mare who could help. She continued to charge down the passage as her heart was racing, her legs throwing her forward before she entered the dungeon. Hovering in the air, Rainbow Dash scanned for the mysterious pony before she quickly gave up and landed on the ground. Hello! She shouted. Her voice echoed through the cave as she began to follow the path in front of her. She looked around. She saw more statues crowding the room around her. They seemed more dazzling even than the last ones. Even more jewels covered them and the statues themselves were plated gold, standing tall, and looking thump. Grr, not again. Wah. She looked at what she just bumped into. Instantly, she was confused. She couldn't tell what it was. It looked rather out of place to be a treasure or a statue. She stepped back, tilting her head, as she looked at the particularly peculiar object, perfectly in the center of the room. She tried to figure out what it was, but she had never seen such a thing before. It was wooden, tall, and square, and... blue?